This is episode 12 of Outlander Cast with Mary and Blake. People disappear all the time. Most are found. Eventually. Disappearances, after all, have explanations. Usually. Outlander cast with Mary and Blake. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Hello, 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 friends. Welcome to Outlander Cast. I'm your host, Mary. My name is Blake. And I've missed you guys, and I've missed this. I've missed every part of this for like so long now. It's been, uh, how, how long has it been now? It's been about three months. No way. Yeah. When, when did we do the uh, the live the live cast? Um, I think think well we did it like right after the season ended wow i can't believe that yeah it's been way too long guys we've i've definitely missed you well so have i (laughs) so we are really happy to be back and we've missed this community we've been staying in touch with you of course over social media but we've also missed outlander i know i i miss it too like it's it's like a fun show I, i miss looking forward to something although I do have Walking Dead now, so I feel like I'm cheating on Outlander a little bit. A very different genre. A little bit. A little? Just a tad. You're talking about Scots versus Zombies. (laughs) That sounds like a great band name. Oh. Scots versus Zombies. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Hey, you know what's really cool about this, too? What? We're coming back at you from our brand new studio. Yes. Part of the reason why Blake and I have been on a podcasting hiatus, we had a big move and now we have this great setup where it's our own little studio in our house. Because before we were doing it from our dining room table, <laughs> it was like so, we, we couldn't eat our dinner at the table. And people would come over. We entertain a lot. And people would come over and it was like the highlight of our house was all of our podcasting gear. So now we're very excited and hopefully we'll be able to pump out a lot more podcast episodes We also wanted to let you guys know in on a little secret. This is like super duper Outlander cast only information. Yeah, like you can't, you cannot let this information out unless it's to Outlander cast fans or to the Outlander cast, like (laughs) Facebook or whatever. It's like double secret probation stuff. Sweetheart, go ahead. I'm pregnant. And I've been pregnant for three months, which is why we've been gone, because I have been sick as a dog. I don't know if you guys remember uh, a couple episodes ago. It was the live cast. It was the live cast. I talked about how I've been very sick. And Blake and I had just recently found out that I was pregnant. We were having a wedding baby. (laughs) And I have never been this sick in my life. I didn't realize that people got this sick. Like I kind of thought that people just milked it. My first pregnancy was easy as pie. This one has not been. So I've decided that I'm probably having a girl. Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, usually when you get the girl, she's like making you feel ugly and she's making you feel sick because, you know, hey, that's just like the folklore, right? That's the mother's tale. That is. That is. If you're having a tough pregnancy, it's because you're having a girl. So we'll see. Blake and I will find out the week after Christmas and we will let you guys know. But that is honestly the big reason for our hiatus is that I have been so nauseous (laughs) that to talk on a microphone would be incredibly painful. And I was going to sleep. Pretty much as soon as the sun was going down. Oh, yeah. yeah. And here, we were going to bed, what, like 7 o'clock, 7.15? Sometimes earlier. And so between the move and my 
a severe morning sickness, all day sickness, oh, wanting bad. to sleep. I just was not a good podcaster. So I hope you guys forgive us. We we had a good reason. And now we are back and I'm bigger. <laughs> a little bit, not too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm squishy. I'm not like bumping yet. I'm squishy. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our excuse. And I hope you guys are cool with this. We actually haven't even told our family yet like our real family so we are we're telling you as our extended family first and we're really proud to tell you guys we're we're so happy about it and we want to share it with you you guys are important to us so you're technically learning about our pregnancy before our own real family so just think about that think of how cool that is and that's technically why you guys are on double secret secret probation now you cannot say a word because we actually have to tell our real families Oh, well, whatever. Yeah, that's our excuse. But today's episode is not about being pregnant. It is our history podcast, which we have been talking about for so long, and we've been looking forward to so much. And now that I can talk, (laughs) we are going to do it. I'm really excited. So I need you guys to bear with me a little bit, because I'm a super history nerd. And if I get too crazy with this, then, you know, I'm going to rely on Mary to uh, figure this out for me. And hopefully she lightens it up for me, uh, and we'll see. Who knows? Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll definitely try it out, and who knows? Maybe we'll get more history episodes out of this. All right, so you want to get into the history episode? Yes. All right, let's do it. And this portion of today's episode is sponsored by Tag Your It Etsy Shop. You guys will definitely want to go check it out. We have a banner ad up on our website. Like, tell them a little bit about the shop. It's run by Dawn. She is absolutely a fantastic person. She's our first sponsor. Yay, Dawn. So please go visit her at the Tag Your It Etsy Shop. I think it's www.tagyourit.com biz b-i-z and she has it's all outlander themed jewelry and she's got some really cool stuff so i'm really happy about it and it's going to be a great partnership and she's great so it's brought to you by the tag your it etsy shop ben let's start off what is a Jacobite. Oh, now, now, just let's do a quick thing. If you already know all of your history about Scotland, just enjoy this. But if you've watched Outlander or read the books and been like, I have no bloody clue what's going on and I did not pay attention in history class, this is the episode for you. So let's, we're doing from the basic beginning through. Yeah, right, Blake? We're, we're, so what exactly is a Jacobite? Like, what does that word mean? Because when I first heard the word Jacobite, I thought it was that bunny What's that fam- famous bunny that like lives in the Southwest and it's scary? <laughs> what? Isn't there like a bunny? That's you mean like- a chupacabra? Maybe. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Jacobite and chupacabra. Well, it has the word bite in it. So I just pictured some <laughs> scary jackrabbit biting people. But then, you know, well, I you learned. said the Southwest thing. That, that kind of ticked me off. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, Jacobite. A Jacobite is, uh, it derives from the word uh, Jacobus, which is Latin for the name James. Why do people keep changing names? Just stay with one. <laughs> well, because, you know, they want to talk like Latin and they want to feel smart and everything. It's it's cool. But where do they get the name James? They get the name James from King James the First, who was a Stuart king and the first ruler of, ruler of a combined throne of England and Scotland. Now, when you say Stuart king, is that like their last name or is that like a type of king? Yes. No. <laughs> Because you said he was the Stuart King. Like, yeah. What does that mean? Does it just mean his name was James Stuart? Actually, yes. That, there you that, go. that is, it, it is what his name was. But the Stu- a Stuart King is of the Stuart line, like the, Stu- the Stuart royal family, the lineage. Okay. okay. He came from the Stuart Kings. The Stuart Kings were a family created a long time ago. So Jacobite is a nickname for James Stuart. Es- es- essentially. And it's named after. King James the first. They could have just called him Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> the Jimmyites. Right? The Jibbits. The Jims. <laughs> just call him the Jims anyway. Well, listen, James the first, that's who they're named after. And that's what we're, ta- we're going to be talking about for a lot of this podcast. He was actually originally known as James the sixth. What? I know. 
Well, he was known as James the Sixth to the people of Scotland because he was the sixth James to be the king of Scotland. But he is James the First because he is the first James to rule all of England and Scotland together. <sighs> That's all I can say. So he took over the combined crown for all the countries, and thus we have James the First. But in order to get a better understanding of Scotland, England, and everything, the whole concept of the combined throne. We actually have to go back in history, like I said, to get a, a better grasp on the Jacobite Revolution, which we'll, we will be talking about eventually. Okay, stop for a second. Was Jimmy, a.k.a. James I, mm-hmm. was he English or Scottish? Jimmy was Scottish. Okay. He was from Scotland. And like I said, he was the sixth Jimmy to rule Scotland. I, no, I'm just nicknaming this Jimmy. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so the good Jimmy. Yeah, the Jimmy that the Jacobite comes from. Okay? <laughs> Everyone right. else can be James because there's way too many of them. He's okay. Jimmy. There are a lot of Jameses. I know. That's why I'm calling him Jimmy. Okay. James the first, Jimmy, lived <laughs> in like the, the 1600s. Okay? He was the first Stuart King of the combined throne, which was great. Oh, cool. So he's Scottish and he eventually rules a combined throne of England and Scotland. Good for at, him. As the Stuart King, the first Stuart King of the Combined Throne. Okay. And that's who everyone's talking about when they're saying Jacobite. They're talking about him. They're like, he was great. He ruled. Yeah. He is basically a rock star. Okay. According to the Scottish. All right. And that's why they that's why they love him so much. But we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Okay. So you said we have to go and talk about his relatives from a long time ago. Correct. Why? Because... Without understanding where he comes from and without understanding the Stuart line, you're not going to, going to understand how and why, who we are eventually going to get, get, get into, Bonnie Prince Charlie, where he comes from. Okay, so the royalty of England has always been defined by a family lineage. There have been a number of different lineages that have ruled England. You know, like they had the Tudor, the Tudor family. Who oh, was like Henry the Eighth? Yes, that's my girl. Good job. He was so handsome in that show, The Tudors. Oh, we did watch that show. Jonathan too. Rhys Myers. It's actually who we named our son after, by the way. Rhys. And then we have the Stuart family, which is in Outlander times. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Jimmy's family. And then that's Jimmy's family. And then we have the Hanoverians, which is actually the current royal lineage. Uh, Elizabeth II. Oh, like Prince William and Kate Middleton. Correct. Okay. All of those people are Hanoverians. They I don't come like that last name very much. Well, the Hanover, that's their last name. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the Stuarts, right, this family line was created by a guy named Robert the Bruce. <gasps> oh my gosh. He was the friend of Braveheart. Um, of, <laughs> William uh, Wallace. Yeah, but he was the one that like wasn't a good friend because he betrayed him. Yeah, he kind of did. But then he was like, oh man, you just died. I feel bad. I'm going to be good after all. Well, what he did was he kind of betrayed him, and but he did it for his own family so he could gain uh, royal lands Yeah, he did in it because he was selfish. And what he did was he eventually ended up going and winning the Battle of Bannockburn to secure his family's rule over Scotland. Okay. Eventually, right? And he, that's that's the final battle that you see at the end when you throw the sword at the end of the movie. That's that's Bannockburn. So he had a daughter eventually, and her his daughter was named Marjorie. Okay. And eventually, she wed a person that was like this really high like high steward of Scotland, and they gave birth to Robert the Second. Okay. Okay. All right. So basically, the guy who in Braveheart was a was bad but then turned good he stayed good had a baby and then she had a baby yes correct okay so now, that was the baby was robert the second but this is the stewart last name so this is robert stewart correct okay all okay. right okay so we talked about the guy from braveheart yep. and then his grandson why is this grandson robert the second stewart robert stewart the second that's how you'd say it. robert <laughs> stewart the second why is he important he is important again because this is the creation of the stewart family line Okay. Okay. So the Stuart family line eventually comes into uh, power with this, with over England, with the combined throne. So we have to kind of start with the combined throne. How did that come together? Well, as with any kind of European history, you cannot have a conversation about that unless you talk about King Henry VIII. Oh, such a stud. And I'm not, I'm not kidding here. King Henry VIII, everything... It, everything changed with his rule. Like it, it was crazy. It, it all kind of just shifted. He was a groundbreaker. He really was. So this conversation with the Stuarts is, is no different. The Stuarts, are, of course, ru- ruled Scotland prior to King Henry VIII. 
for for over 200 years. They, they but of course, like any good Scotsman, they're going to run into issues with England, right? They're going to have problems. They're going to have border skirmishes. They're going to have Braveheart. Okay, freedom. <laughs> so Scotland was always allied with France. They had border tension. They had problems sustaining their own country. So what did they do? They go to England. And even though the Stuarts were... Who goes to England? The Stuarts. Okay. And even though they were a mediocre to good line of kings who led Scotland to prosperity, they knew... Mediocre is such a cruel word. Well, can you say something nice? But we're going to get into why they were kind of mediocre. Okay? They knew they had to have peace with England. So what did they do? After a whole bunch of different Jameses ruled Scotland, right? There was a a whole bunch of different kinds. Yeah. We don't need to get into that. James the Fourth signed a document called the Treaty of Perpetual Peace. That's with, serious. I know, with none other than King Henry the Eighth, and this is why everything mm-hmm. focuses around King Henry the Eighth. So, to seal the deal, King Henry the Eighth has James, James the Fourth, marry his sister Margaret Tudor. Right? Marry King Henry's sister? Uh, yes. Oh, so, okay. So James the Fourth marries King Henry's sister. Now they're brothers-in-law. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Actually, they are, literally, brothers-in-law. Yeah. So this sets the stage for the union of the crowns. Of course, James IV was eventually killed in battle, whatever, who cares, but it, that gave way to his son, James V. Yeah, but he isn't king. King Henry VIII is king. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're talking about lineage here, not necessarily kingdoms. We're oh. setting up how how the combined throne was created. Yeah, but still, the English king is king. So why, what happened to James V? Like, how did this, how did the Stuarts get to have any power? Well, see, now this is where it gets juicy because James V eventually dies of an illness. Who They're cares? All dying. I know, all they, the James they, dying. they all die eventually and he leaves his throne to his only surviving child, Mary Stuart. What throne? I thought they did. I thought the, they made the, a... the Scottish throne. Oh, okay. So there still is a Scottish throne. There's a Scottish throne. There's an English throne. They're still not combined yet. But what the the Treaty of Perpetual Peace that was signed earlier mm-hmm. that leads that gives motion towards this combined throne. Okay. Okay. It essentially it combines the families. It combines the Tudors and it combines the Stuarts. It makes them friends. Yeah, they make some friends. They're 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 cool with each other. They're gonna have buddies. It, let's not fight. That's kind of what. Let's it be cool with each other. Okay. Right. Okay. So he gives the throne to his only surviving child, which is a woman, Mary Stewart. She has a great name. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> but you and everybody else that's listening to this may know this woman as Mary Queen of Scots. Ooh. Okay. So that name is very familiar. Yes, it is. I have no idea why. Well, because Mary, the Queen of Scots, was actually cousin to Elizabeth II, who was, in fact, Henry VIII's daughter that we all know. She was the daughter of Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII. Ah, <gasps> right? Anne Boleyn. Okay, great. So let's get, let's go with this. You mean Elizabeth I, not the second. Yeah, Elizabeth I. I'm sorry. Okay. After Henry VIII's death, death his eldest daughter. Now, this is going to get a little confusing. Okay, okay, okay. Mary, Queen of Scots. She becomes Queen of Scotland, right? Okay. okay, some time passes. Why is she so important? Well, King Henry VIII eventually dies. We all know that. And after his, after his rule, his daughter, Mary Tudor, takes over as Queen of England. Yes. She only has a little bit of a, a reign. Why? Because she eventually dies too. People needed like flu vaccines or something back yeah, then. I know. She, well, <laughs> <laughs> I think they're drinking all the Sassanac water. That's yes. why they, she, the, I mean, Mary Tudor, tried to make England Catholic again. Because before with, with, uh, with Henry VIII, it was Protestant. It was, yes. it was Anglican. They, they, they gave way to the Anglican Church. So, so, so English Mary comes English in, Mary. And she's like, she Let's... comes in. She wants to make everything Catholic. Where Scotland with Scottish Mary... Is Catholic still. Correct. Yes. So they're, they're going to be like buddies. Problem yeah. is, English Mary dies. Oh, God. So what happens? So then her older sister took over. Cur- uh, she Well, she's the younger sister. Okay, well, that's what I meant. Yeah, booby trap. She gives way to Queen Elizabeth to fir- the first. Like I said, daughter to Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. Who got her head chopped off. <laughs> Eventually, yes. Yeah. 
So we all know Queen Elizabeth. She's really famous. She ruled for a long time. She was actually play, played by Kate Blanchett in Wasn't the movie. Wasn't she the one when they say like Elizabethan times and yes. um, Shakespeare and everything? Yes. So you understand where we are now, right? Um. Yeah. You understand like a kind of time period and Romeo and Juliet. What's going on? Okay. So here's the rub between Elizabeth and Mary, Queen of Scots. Okay. So now you have Elizabeth ruling England. And you have Queen of Scots, Mary, ruling Scotland. In the eyes of many Catholics, Elizabeth was not legitimate. She was an illegitimate heir because she was a Protestant and also the daughter of Anne Boleyn, who'd been vilified in England. Okay, that's like a lot of words. So basically you're saying when King Henry married Anne Boleyn, because she was a bit of a hussy, um, <laughs> yep. and then he changed his mind on her because she went a little crazy and he beheaded her. He was like, everyone, she was terrible. Correct. She's a villain. So nobody really was down with the fact that their daughter should get the throne, especially because of her religious beliefs. Especially because of that and because she was a woman and there was there was a lot of problems, especially Catholics. Catholics did not like Elizabeth being on the throne, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Since Mary Tudor died and they believe that Elizabeth was Ill- illegitimate because of that, to them, Henry VIII didn't have a legitimate Tudor heir to the throne. Who felt this way? Just the Catholics, Catholics, and, a lot of and, and, and some different people felt this way. Now, this wasn't a, this wasn't a widespread thing, but this was enough to to have political dissension. Yeah, people were questioning. Okay, so now we come to Mary Stuart, who is the Mary Queen of Scots. Since she was the senior, like the, the eldest descendant of Henry VIII's sister. Remember how she, uh, her dad got married to... Um, yeah, the brother-in-law. The brother-in-law, okay. She, to them, was the only rightful heir to the throne of England. To, and in she their was eyes. Catholic, so and they liked that. That's like brownie points. That's right. So I'm trying to piece this together. So we had English Mary, who died, and then English Elizabeth, who was ruling and you know, Elizabethan times, but people just weren't really down with that, even though they think it was like one of the best periods of England. Anyway, people who are living in England didn't really love the fact that she wasn't Catholic. And they were like, hey, Mary, Queen of Scots is pretty cool. And she's Catholic and she's, you know, got the right lineage. But I don't remember Mary, Queen of Scots becoming Mary, Queen of Scots in England. That's <laughs> that's right. That's that's not the code name that I remember. So after a lot of infighting and a lot of crappy politics that we're not going to get into because this is not a course in English history, Elizabeth, of course, remained queen. And she led England to an era of spectacular prosperity, as we know as the Elizabethan times. Yes. Eventually, was Ma- Mary, Queen of Scots, was forced to abdicate her throne in Scotland, Why? eventually. It was hers. I know, but p- people got pissed off for a lot of different reasons that we don't need to get into. But suffice it to say, Mary was forced to abdicate. Oh my gosh, I would be so mad. Her Scottish right. that was gone. So what did she do? She said, oh, I'm going to go chill out with Elizabeth in England because she's going to protect me. I'm her first cousin and yeah. we're like bros. Yeah. So she goes to England. <sighs> But, of course, following in her father's footsteps, what does Elizabeth do? She chops off Mary's head. She chops off Mary's head because she, Elizabeth, was paranoid. Did she paranoid. chop off her head or did she do some other kind of mean? Chopped off her head. What? Because she was paranoid. I was and joking. She, and she eventually ex- executed Mary for suspicion of treason. So this paves the way to James the fifth, the sixth, her only son, actually known as your boy, Jacobus, James the first. Who I like to call Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy. So before Mary got beheaded, she had a baby, Jimmy. Yep. Okay. How old is Jimmy? Wh- what's going on here? Let's just do a quick recap. Okay. So Mary, Queen of Scots, who reigned for a very long time while other people were dying. Mm-hmm. She was just chilling in Scotland, minding her own business, and things went down. And people were just cranky. So she moved to England to go hang out with her cousin, Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. But Elizabeth was a little crazy. Yep. I was like, um, hi there, dear cousin. Come on over. Chop (laughs) off her head. And all this was precipitated by the fact that Henry VIII signed that treaty to combine the families. Well, did Elizabeth not read that? What was it called? Something about peace? (laughs) The Treaty of Perpetual Peace. Perpetual means forever, Forever, girlfriend. Elizabeth did not read that in the history (laughs) class. Oh, man. She didn't get it. So, okay. So before she croaks, uh, before Mary croaks, she has a son. And this becomes eventually James the Sixth. Who I'm calling Jimmy. Who's who, now, you know, as Jimmy, who becomes the first ruler of a combined throne. 
so confusing. Okay, well, okay, get me there. Okay, so I'm just picturing I'm picturing like a little Harry Potter baby named Jimmy, <laughs> who has like no parents and he's all alone and he's scared. And Queen Elizabeth is like Voldemort. That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> anyway, oh my God. you're a wizard, Harry. <sighs> we can't get through one podcast without having a Harry Potter reference. Okay, so how do we get to James the First from Elizabeth? Right. This is the question. Can we just call him Jimmy? Jimmy. I'm sorry. How do we get to Jimmy from Elizabeth? Well, with no heir at the end of her reign, when Elizabeth eventually dies, she left some issues for the Tudor line of kings. Who's going to rule England? There's no heir. She didn't have a kid. What are they going to do? Right? Yeah. As Elizabeth I was the last of King Henry VIII's descendants, James, Jimmy, was seen as the most likely heir to the English throne through his great-grandmother, Margaret Tudor, who was Henry VIII's sister. Oh my God. So if Elizabeth didn't cut off Mary, Queen of Scots' head, Mary, Queen of Scots would have just taken the throne. She would have been taken the throne if she were still alive. Or oh. if Elizabeth just had a kid, they would have been the... It's not that easy. No, okay? it's not. Just because I'm pregnant. It, it's mean... just that she refused to take a lover. Okay? But again, we're not, we're not getting into English history here. Maybe she saw people like me being sick. And she was like, <laughs> I don't want to uh, get pregnant. That looks terrible. So what happens is this. James eventually becomes king Jimmy. because Jimmy, because he's the only person that has any royal lineage. How old back was he? To, was he a baby? Back to King Henry. No, he wasn't a baby. Okay. But he has the only royal lineage back to King Henry VIII at all, somehow, some way. So he becomes the first king of Scotland and England because he's technically a Scottish king. He won the genetic lottery. Yes, he did. Was he prepping for this? Because you know how like, you know, when you're like a prince or whatever, you go to like king school and you learn different things. Was he ready for this? This isn't, I don't think it's like a, a Pixar movie. Honey. <laughs> There's no like king school. No, that's what they do. They like learn things. Yeah, sure. Maybe. They learn things. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so why is Jimmy so important and why do people love him so much that they call themselves Jacobites? Okay. So now we got James, Jimmy and they're calling themselves the Jacobites after James the first. Like uh, while he's there. Cause you know how like, um, big fans, like did they call themselves Jacobites while he was there? No, not then. They, but they eventually they did call themselves Jacobites. Okay. Okay. So why is he such a big deal? Well, remember that movie V for Vendetta? Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. And the guy with the weird mask. Correct. Well, that, even though it took place in the future in the movie, that was in the movie they discussed, that takes place in real life. The, the guy who tries to bomb Parliament. Someone wear a mask like that? Uh, no, no, that was his face. Like that was his, it, in the movie they wear a mask of his face. But in real life, there was a guy who tried to blow up Parliament. And the 5th of, the 5th of November, November, remember, remember the 5th of, of November, remember that line? I watched it really late. <laughs> And I was well. Anyway, anyway, that was under James the r- the first rule. As okay. a matter of fact, some person tried to blow up Jimmy's house. Correct. Or Jimmy's, you know, the work. parliament. Yeah, and the colonization of America, the United States. Yeah. That started under James the first. Jamestown, named after James the first. Oh, did he know the Native Americans lived here? I don't think he did, and I don't think he really cared. This <laughs> Ew, is terrible. Hey, in the King James Bible. Yeah. Oh, it's Jimmy. Uh, it's Jimmy. Okay, so. So a lot of things were happening around this time. He basically helped to find the idea of the divine right of kings, meaning like it was the divine right of their line to rule England. Like go- the gods demanded that they rule God, England. One God. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. So he began a relative peace of uh, a, a time of peace and prosperity. Okay. All right. So he was he was kind of big time. He was a rock star. Yeah, people people dug him. They were happy under his reign. Correct. All right. Okay. So I'm getting this. So then there's another person that people talk about, Bonnie Prince Charlie. Yeah, now remember they were talking about that in the show. So he comes after James the first, right? But he doesn't come for a little while. Who is he? Well, we're going to get into that eventually. He is he is part of the Stuart family lineage, but we're we're going to get to He's him. He's Jimmy's relative. He, yes, he is. But we're going to get to him. So we're, we got to go through a couple of things before we get to him. Oh my. Okay. All okay. right. Eventually, James the first Jimmy was executed by a guy named Oliver Cromwell. What? This is why I'm glad I'm not royalty. <laughs> it was after the English Civil War, and yes, England did have a civil war, and it 
the Civil War was to create the Commonwealth of England, a country ruled as a republic. Oh, I had no idea. I know, right? That for a time there, there was no king of England. I thought Jimmy was. Yeah, he was executed by this guy, Oliver Cromwell. Oh my God. During the English Civil War. People got pissed off. Why? I thought you said it was a good time that people thought he was a rock star. I, 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 I agree, but this guy, Oliver Cromwell, was a pretty cool dude. So no, what, it doesn't. He was. In, he no, killed. he 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 was not. He he was a hard fisted guy, but he eventually creates the English Republic, and that's kind of like how the, the U.S. is ruled now. It was ruled by this guy Cromwell. He was a dictator. He ran the whole country. I don't like the words dictator. I don't like the word. Well, the war. the term dictator is not a bad term. It's just how it's been used. That's that's a bad term. I think you and I have very different opinions about this. Tell me about when this guy Cromwell dies, because I just don't like him. Well, eventually Cromwell does die, but he left a power vacuum in England. What's that mean? Meaning like there was a bunch of people trying to vie for his role as leader of England. Yeah, because he got rid of the one king. I know. And the English had no idea what to do. They literally had, they were just running around like chickens with their heads cut off. They were basically like, thanks, Cromwell. Things were great. We understood what was going on with Elizabeth and with Jimmy. And then you came in and some people thought it was a great idea. And now you're dead. So the, all they knew was monarchy at the time. That's all they had. And that's all they could go back to. So what did they do? They, they go back to the one remaining Stuart heir, the guy who was the last Stuart lineage king. And he, is, he was Charles II who was, of course, son of Charles I. They invited him to come back and rule as the king in the new monarchy of England. Of course, he naturally died of natural causes, and he gave way to King James II. <sighs> <laughs> I can tell you're getting frustrated with you all know, the James. I just hate how people didn't get original with names. I you know, know, there's just too many of them, and then they keep changing the numbers. Why can't we have a Bob? Seriously. Okay, we can call this one James. All right, okay. since the other one that I liked was Jimmy. Okay, so James, Lil James. James the second. James the second is now on the throne. Correct. James the second is on the throne. And of, I, what? I, of what? Of what? Of England? King uh, of England and Scotland. Okay? okay. Because after the revolution, they had no idea what to do, so they created, they went back to the Stuart family line. Was his dad Bonnie Prince Charlie? Because his dad's old. Nope, we're getting, dead. To, we're getting to that, though. Okay. So. James II is important because he was actually a closet Catholic. He came out saying that he was Protestant to make England happy, but he wasn't. He was actually Catholic. He was pro... <laughs> I know, isn't that weird, right? So he was actually Catholic, a pro-France guy, and he had a Catholic heir that was actually really out as Catholic, and that really freaked out people in England. Many Protestant English leaders actually convinced James the second son-in-law William of Orange husband to James the second daughter oh my god I'm getting really confused I know let me let me finish he William was the son-in-law of James the second James the second eventually had a daughter named Mary <laughs> <sighs> not original these Protestant people eventually convinced William and Mary to invade England and take out James the second Oh my God, they convinced his own daughter? Correct. Because she wanted the throne. Oh my gosh. Right? So he, James II, had a boy who was Catholic. And that freaked everybody out. That pissed everybody off. And he was open about it being Catholic. So he had a daughter prior to that. Her name was Mary. She gets married to this guy named William. The Protestants in England tell William and Mary, hey, I want you to take out James II because all this stuff is bad. We want a Protestant guy. Listen, religion is someone's own private business. Not it in England not, at the time. <laughs> it is not dinner conversation. You do not go. Did they kill Did they kill James II? Where did he go? Well, we're going to get to that. Quick aside. You know the College of William and Mary? Yeah. In Virginia? Yeah. Named after William of Orange and Mary? I don't know how I feel about them. That's the truth. She, she betrayed her dad. So it's actually the second oldest college in the United States. You know that? Oh, second only to Harvard. Wow. Imagine that. Anyway, so these William and Mary, they were convinced to raid England and take out James. This was called the Glorious Revolution. And why, why is it called the Glorious Revolution? Mainly because they invaded and no one was killed. There yeah, was not, not gonna, one life was taken. What is she going to do? Like go up to her dad and be like, hi, dad. Not only am I invading you, but I'm going to kill you. Well, he was, he was scared. The James II was scared. 
He literally just gave up the throne and took off. Oh, he took off and went to France because he had no idea what to do. They take over and both William and Mary take over the, the throne. And of course, they naturally die and they die of natural causes. They ruled the, as queen and king of England for a long time. As Protestants. And they gave birth to the final Stuart ruler of the combined throne. Her name is Anne, Queen Anne. Finally, something original. Anne, not Mary. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Queen Anne eventually dies. Who's technically James II's granddaughter. So, you know, we're cool with that. And because she has no heirs and there's no other Stuart heirs at the time, the English don't know what to do. So what happens is they finally, they give the rule to the current, right now, us, current line of English kings and queens, the Hanoverians. How did, he, how did they win? How did they win the lottery? It, again, it goes back to lineage from King Henry VIII. So Prince William and Kate Middleton's family are somehow related to King Henry VIII, but in a very distant, 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 far distant way. Okay. So, but that's how they do it. Okay. Um, so now we have moved on to Prince William's family. We are far, far away from the Stuarts because she died. Correct. But we still have the Stuart family to deal with. And this is now finally when we're getting to Bonnie Prince Charlie. Okay. Okay. James II who was overthrown in the Glorious Revolution. His heir, the boy, that one that was the Catholic, was James III. Okay. Okay? And James III lived in France, and he was known as the king over the water. He was the king of Scotland, but he lived in France because his father went away to France out of shame, right? So they also called him the Old Pretender. Well, he lived in France... And on his father's death in 1701, James declared himself King James the Third of England and the seventh, I'm not sorry, the eighth of Scotland, and was recognized by France, Spain, the Papal States, all these people. They all recognized him. All these Catholic countries. Okay, wait. So this young guy living in France just shows up and says, "Hey, guess what? I'm I'm king now." And I, he wasn't even in Scotland or England. He nope. just did it from from France. Yep, did it from France. Can I do that? Yeah. You want to do it? Can I just send a letter and be like, I'm queen of that country. <laughs> you live in Rhode Island. So what? So the, all these people, they refused to recognize William and Mary or Queen Anne, by the way. They refused to recognize them. They legitimately said they did not recognize the English throne. But basically, they, in their eyes, there was no king or queen except for James III. It was crazy. This oh. time was absolutely insane. Okay, wait. Okay, so you're saying France, Spain. So basically everyone who was Catholic literally the son of William and Mary. And they were and like... They Queen Anne. And yeah. they were like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're not Catholic. Yeah, you guys suck. You are no longer queen. Correct. So now this is when we get to the first Jacobite rebellion in 1715. You know what I feel like this is like? What? When... You're friends with people in like high school or even junior high. And then you do something and they don't like love it. And then a new kid comes to school and they really love that new kid. And they don't sit with you at lunch anymore. And you're like, what the heck did I do? What's up with that, bro? I I thought we were friends. (laughs) Why don't you sit with me anymore? Oh, I, you know, we changed. We grew apart. Sorry. It's like the plastics. That's what I feel like. Yeah, no. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, but mind you, I don't really like William and Mary because of what they did to her dad. So I guess you got what was coming to you but to get dissed. But that's what I kind of feel like this was like. So here we got James the Third, right? After Queen Anne dies, he decides, dude, this is my time. I- I'm going to take over England. Now's my moment. And I'm showing up. And he does. He goes to England and he tries to invade England through the Highlands. But the problem is <laughs> nobody wanted to help him. Aww. Nobody cared. Because everybody kind of liked the Hanoverians. They were all good people. George I was a cool guy. So after King James III kind of loses some battles and they were a little indecisive, they kind of abandoned him. And he left to go back to France. And France just said, mm, you know what? We got, some, we got some problems here with England too. You know what they did? What? You're a loser, baby. <laughs> so why don't you kill yourself? Oh, God. <laughs> France wouldn't have said that. But they basically were like, you lost. Uh, why don't you go uh, get out of my country? Yeah. 
Yeah. Go have some French fries. Yeah. <laughs> you like my French accent? Not really, but it's, be- it's better than my Scottish accent. It is. <laughs> so they said, "Hey, dude, get out of our country. We don't want anything to do with you." Because they have they had tensions with England that they couldn't afford. Now where's he gonna go? So he goes to Rome because he's Catholic. Hey. And Rome says, "Yo, boy, I got you." Where he gives to his son. Charles. What do you mean he gives to his son? What does he give to his son? Pizza? No, he gives birth to his son. He, but he, his, his his wife, his whatever, has a boy. And that boy's name is Charles. I wonder if Charles grew up with an Italian accent. He was like, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Mama. So this is Bonnie Prince Charlie, finally. Molto bene. So <laughs> we, what we've done now is we've gone over how the combined th- throne came about. We've gone over the Stuart line and how it was related to the Tudor line and how eventually the Stuart line gave way to the Hanoverian line and how the Stuart king, James III, decided, I'm going to go rule Scotland, uh, England as soon as the Hanoverians took over. And then they kicked him out. He left. And now he's given birth to Bonnie Prince Charlie. Mamma mia. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Mario. That's what, I, that's what I picture Bonnie Fitch Charlie talking like. Okay. So now at this very moment, a few years later. We, wh- wh- I don't even know what time it is. I feel like Prince William and Prince Bonnie Prince Charlie are eating pizza at the Duomo. What, <laughs> what year is this? Well, now we're starting to get to current times in Outlander, 1745. Okay. So at this time, Prince William and Prince Harry's ancestor is on the English throne. Okay, correct. Who is like the ever, ever, ever distant cousin of King Henry VIII. Like okay. I said, everything in, in English history, somehow, some way, it all pinnacles itself at King Henry VIII. But technically the people who are really closer to King Line were the Stuarts. Yes. And you have um Mamma Mia Charlie living in Rome. Yep. Who is kind of like the one that should be technically ruling right now. Correct, but he doesn't because James II, his father, gave way in the Glorious Revolution to William and Mary. What do you mean he gave way? Like he abdicated. He let oh. go of his throne. I thought that was James the Third. No, that was James II. James the Third was the one who invaded Scotland and and everyone was like, dude, we're all set, actually. You don't need to be here anymore. Okay, so James the Second. Oh, yeah, James the Second ran away. Mm-hmm. And he was very sad. James the Third was like, my dad was crazy. I'm going to go back there. Yep. And nobody wanted him. Nobody wanted him. So he went away like a dog but with his tail between his legs. Correct. And they've been hanging out in Rome and Charlie's just eating pizza. Mamma mia. That's right. <laughs> so now here we are. We are at 1745 and it is present day Outlander. We are now talking about Charles Edward Stewart, well, who it's not is technically present day Outlander, it's close to. Well, get close to it. Okay. So we're talking about Charles Edward Stewart, who is, as we all now know, Bonnie Prince Charlie. Can we just call him that from now on? Bonnie Prince Charlie. Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. So let's set the scene a little bit in 1745 Europe. Okay. Okay. Why does the Battle of Culloden happen? I'm going to get to this. This is the scene in Europe. At this point in time, there was actually a major conflict over in Austria. What, what, why are we talking about Austria? I'm going to get that. Britain was involved in this, this like lineal battle in Austria. right? They, they had sent armies over. It was almost one of the first world wars. It was kind of a big deal. So mo- as most of the European countries were involved, all of their armies were there and they were spread thin. So this is when Charlie, Bonnie Prince Charlie, dev- decided to reinvade England. Okay, so you're saying reinvade, but you don't really mean that because Bonnie Prince Charlie has never invaded. Yeah, I mean, like in the footsteps of his uh, father, he was invading England to to get the Stuarts back into the king, like back to being kings. These people have a lot of gumption. <laughs> I know, doing what they're doing, right? Like I. I would be all set. People get killed in England. Their heads get chopped off. You get betrayed by your daughter. I would stay in Italy. Well, listen. Charlie, Char- Charlie decided not to. Charlie know. was, he was young and he was vibrant. He was a, a pretty capable politician. He's like, he's kind of like Barack Obama. Like he spoke like Barack well. Barack Obama Like when two, he ran circa first. 2008. Okay. Okay. Barack Obama 2008. That's Bonnie Prince Charlie. Change. Okay, yeah, change is a coming. 
And that's what he promised. And as the Stuart King, he thought, damn, I got the right to do this. I can do anything I want. So he does it. He decides, I'm invading England. And in fact, I am so convinced that I'm awesome that people around me are going to follow me. They didn't follow my dad because he was kind of a dink. Me, however, I'm awesome. And when I get there, everyone's going to kind of flutter at the knees. Mm. Was he handsome? Yes, he was, as a matter of fact. He was, he was a handsome dude. That helps. So what did he do? He goes to the French and says, hey, give me some help here. Bonjour. I'm going to... <laughs> Les poissons. <laughs> I just snorted because of you. Thank you. He convinces the French to help. And he actually convinces two Highland chiefs in Scotland to help him as well. By, with some intercommunications back and forth. So he garners a force of 3,000 men and some French ships and some French armies to go to Scotland, Highland Scotland, and invade. The problem is there was a big, huge freaking storm Aww. over the sea while he was sailing. Aww. So what, is he, what happens? Bonnie Prince Charlie shows up to the shores of Scotland with like six guys no. and himself. I'm not kidding. <gasps> How embarrassing. The problem, but regardless, the, some of the Highland tribes were there to welcome him and they gave him some troops and eventually he got he garnered some more guys that he sent back for more of his guys showed up from uh from france great everything was everything was going to happen i hope they wore life jackets this time <laughs> so he invades scotland um, so he invades Charlie. england okay. from scotland the, the highlands okay since there weren't a lot of forces to oppose him in because they were too busy in Austria. They, they were too busy in Austria. They got things going on over there. Charles and his 3,000 guys that he eventually gets, they march on, on to Edinburgh. Oh my God, he must have gone and been like, conquering is so easy. He, it was, because <laughs> nobody opposed him. He just showed up. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's not. <laughs> oh my God, I love this. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> he just shows up and it's a clear path to London. No one's there to oppose him. It was like the man on the moon putting a flag. He's like, I claim this land. <laughs> For me. One small step for England. <laughs> One great step for Bonnie Prince Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so he goes, it's a clear path to London. He defeats any British army. It was led by Sir John Cope, whatever, at the Battle of Preston Pans under 15 minutes. Under 15 minutes, he wins the, he w- Bonnie Prince Charlie wins a battle. He probably just did rock, paper, scissors. That is really quick. 15 minutes. I know. I'm, I'm not kidding. And he just kept going to England. Okay. So he's he's really lucky. He is exceptionally lucky because England wasn't really paying attention to him. They're like, ah, yeah, whatever. We'll figure it out later. We'll send, send Cope to go figure it out. Problem is, Cope loses, right? So now he keeps going, Bonnie Prince Charlie, down to England. And he keeps going. And nobody is there to, to stop him. Nice. So Charlie persuades some of his generals that the English Jacobites would stage an uprising in support of his cause. He was convinced that France would launch an invasion of England as well. So his eventual army that he garnered grew to 5,000 people, and they invaded the England proper on 8th of November, 1745. They advanced through Carlisle and Manchester, down to Derby. They kept going and going, and this started to gain some steam. But the closer they get to England that they got the less support they received from the people around them. Well, yeah, you're getting to the epicenter. Correct. I mean, why why didn't he just kind of like circle around? Like, hey, people outside of London, you're probably going to listen to me. Why did he go straight for London? I would have gone around in a circle, picked up more people, and then gone. (laughs) Well, finally, George I hears about this, the Hanoverian king. Prince William's grand, grand, grand poppy. Yeah, whatever. Okay. He hears about this, and he says, all right, this guy, Bonnie Prince Charlie... Dude, I'm done. It, it's like a fly. It's, it's, it's like the fly that's buzzing in your ear. Oh, it's more like mosquitoes. I hate when mosquitoes do that. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, that. That's what Bonnie Prince Charlie is, is to uh, George the First. So what does George the First do? Squishes him. Yeah, he sends his he sends his first cousin. Like he wasn't screwing around. Like I want somebody I can trust. This guy's name is Lord Cumberland. He sends Cumberland over to go squash out Bonnie Prince Charlie. Mm, Tell me what happened. Sounds juicy. It is juicy because this is the beginning of the end for Bonnie Prince Charlie. Oh. This is it. So with only 5,500 men, which he eventually garnered, Charlie's top general, this guy's name is uh, uh, George Murray. Too many Georges already. Whatever. It doesn't matter. He began arguing that it's like, hey, Bonnie Prince Charlie, dude, George the first heard about us. 
and he's got a lot of guys. What we need to do is go back to Scotland right now, and we need to regroup, get some more guys from France, and then show back up here. And if we, even if we win, if even if we beat Cumberland, we're still going to lose so many guys that it's not even going to be worth our time anymore. Okay. We so won't. We won't be able to fight continually going forward. So, did Charlie listen to this good advice? Of course not. <sighs> he says, "Hey, dude, you you just don't have a commitment to the to the Stuart throne. Uh, what are you talking about?" Well. Here's the problem. It was essentially a lose-lose situation for Bonnie Prince Charlie. Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like he was overconfident, and he should have just heeded um, his buddy's advice and kind of hung out a little bit and waited. So he attacks Cumberland, Lord Cumberland, and he got support for some, from a couple Highland clans. He kept his army, and he was vigilant until an English spy entered the, his council. And the spy says to them, Guys, I just heard that there's an army of 9,000 British soldiers that just showed up in England from Austria, and they're coming to kick our ass. <gasps> oh so <laughs> when he hears this, Charlie says, dude, F this. We have to retreat. Go back on those boats, man. Get out of here. We got to get out of here. Let's go back and get some pizza. So he finally retreats back into Scotland, and a bunch of different little skirmishes happen, and so on and so forth, and, this, and the, Sc- the Scottish keep getting beat because now all these British soldiers are, are there now. Yeah, there's a lot of them. So this is where the Battle of Culloden happens. Oh. This is it right here. So after retreating and skirmishing all these different times, the Jacobites and the English finally meet at Culloden, right outside of our favorite little town of Inverness. A, you know, a group of Highlanders, some Lowlanders, French, and Irish fought against the English. But we all knew the loss, right? Yeah, the Scottish lost. That's, that's so sad. That's what Claire was looking at with Frank, all the gravestones. Correct. And Frank at that time said it was a slaughter, right? Yeah. Well, yes, they lose the battle. They definitely lose the battle, like Frank said. It was both quick and bloody, and it was taking. It, it took place, like Frank said, in about an hour. I don't even know how that happens. They, they, it, you know, Bonnie Prince Charlie. He gets down in the, in the dirt, and he realizes I have no other choice but to actually do this big charge. And it was all of his men. He just sent them right at the British, hoping to break the lines and win the battle. Problem is, they didn't. However, what the show doesn't tell you what frank doesn't tell you in the show is that the english forces were made up of english but also a significant number of scottish lowlanders and highlanders wait that didn't want bonnie prince charlie correct the scottish people fought against bonnie prince charlie as well Uh oh if he only knew that he would have cried so uh, uh, they they (laughs) i know right they were not all in on Bonnie Prince Charlie, and this was the fatal flaw in Prince Bonnie Prince Charlie's plan. Mm-hmm. There was no significant uprising throughout all of Scotland. The further south they got, the less people cared about them. Oh my God! I just came up with something. What? The Battle of Culloden was like a colander, okay? Because he thinks he's got like all this power, but really it's just falling through the cracks. Like you don't have it. You don't have the support. Yeah. It's like keeping water in a colander. So it wasn't like Scotland versus England. It was these couple of dudes and a lot of other people that were pissed off at these couple of dudes. Gotcha. So was Frank wrong? No. He wasn't wrong. And maybe you'll just have to wait and see, Blake. But he wasn't right either. He wasn't right. He talks about the battle being like, like... swords versus guns it was the scottish running with their swords and their kilts going crazy and screaming and ah freedom well that wasn't necessarily the truth either oh yes he was kind of right that the jacobites lacked any formal training they were volunteers they were just guys they showed up and they were definitely in their kilts and they were definitely running amok but they had they had organized generals they had organized stuff as a matter of fact Yes, they may have started with swords, but by Culloden, the battle, because of their success, the British general, uh, Cumberland, he eventually says, he eventually realizes that no more than one-fifth of the Jacobites carried a sword. They were all using guns, too. Okay. In equal. fact, they were using cannon. Okay. This, they- was, this was a legitimate battle. Yeah. It's just that 
<laughs> the, the Scottish got beat. They yeah. got beat good. A lot of them got beat. So between 1,500 and 2,000 Jacobites were killed. Correct. And then some are prisoners. Um, what happened to Bonnie Prince Charlie? Charlie escaped. He left. He took off. These stewards, they're like slippery little people. They <laughs> sneak away. <laughs> <laughs> and what do they do? Like all the steward kings, they go to France. Bonjour. <laughs> he goes to France. And uh, never, ever returns to Scotland again. And lives out his days in France. Man. So, now this is just me getting a little crazy here. Get a little crazy? Nowhere are the Mackenzies mentioned in any of the research that I did for the Battle of Culloden. Well, you know the Mackenzies are my family. So you gotta be careful. I'm not saying that you didn't do nothing. I'm saying in the research that I did, Mackenzies were not mentioned at all. The Frasers, however... That's an entirely different story. <clears throat> so I wonder if that's part of the story. I don't know. <sighs> I got nothing. I'm I'm not even gonna Don't say anything. Say anything. What was the aftermath that Frank said it was the end of the Highland culture? Because we were able to see some really beautiful insights to the Highland culture. Yes, we were, as a matter of fact. And uh why would Culloden end it? Okay. Because my dad goes to the Highland Games. Does he really? Oh, my God. I like, didn't know that. Oh, my God. Yes. My dad <laughs> goes. My dad wears his kilt and goes to the Highland Games. I have to see this. Yeah. Oh, my God. He'll take you to the one in Nova Scotia if you Wait, want. Wait, does he wear that thing that the... <laughs> That what? the shirt, the long shirt that you were talking to me about? <laughs> no, that's like Middle Eastern. The Middle Eastern people wear? No, no. <laughs> he wears his kilt, though. <laughs> All right. Again... Frank isn't wrong about this, the, the, essentially the culture of the Highlands ending. But I don't think so because the Highland games go on. I know. That's why I'm saying he isn't totally right either. Okay, good. So, yes, there were many prisoners. There was a lot of deaths and there was a lot of people executed in London, especially all the lords of all the Highland rebels. Execution is just so tough. Okay. So, remember how we talked about the Treaty of Perpetual Peace? Yeah, that Elizabeth did a really good job at. <laughs> Great. Now here's the second kind of treaty. It's called the Heritable Jurisdictions Well, that one's Act. a mouthful. Yes, it is. And it doesn't sound like there was a treaty made at all. It just sounds like the English came in and were like, die, die, hey, die. guess what? <laughs> Bro. And here's, and here's our jurisdiction. <laughs> Who cares about peace? All right. So this took place after the, the Jacobite Rising of 1745 that we've been talking about now for the past 10 minutes or so. It abolished... Basically, any traditional rights of jurisdiction afforded to a Scottish clan chief, like what, like the uh, like the Mackenzie chief, like the Mackenzie, uh, what's his name there, the guy with the messed up legs, Colum. Colum, he is a Scottish chief of the Highlands. Yeah. Right? Okay, they're saying that he basically has no more rule, no more jurisdiction over what his lands are. Just because they wrote a piece of paper and they were like, "Who needs peace?" Correct. You so, are no longer a chief. I- inherently, at that time, Scottish lords had the regalities, and and they were they were able to judge in civil and criminal cases among their dependents, among their among their suitors. They were like mayors. They were able to do that stuff. The act, however, put an end to this by extending universal royal district jurisdiction of England throughout Scotland. Oh my God. It's but- like it's like the United States government going into Massachusetts or Rhode Island and saying, you know what? Guess what? Rhode Island no longer has a government. There is no more state government. We're gonna we're gonna run this place. And now. we're gonna tell you what to do. That's what that's what that is. Oh my goodness, the chiefs must have been so mad. Okay. But Frank isn't always right. Correct. Right? Tell so, me. After the earlier Jacobite re- 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 rising of seventeen fifteen, the one by James the Third. Second? The I'm sorry, the the first one. After the first <sighs> After Jimmy, there's just so many James. Actually, I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. After the first Jacobite res- rising by James the Third, who was Bonnie Prince Charlie's dad. Um, was the he, one who went to France? Was he the one that his daughter? S- that was James the Second. Okay. And then James the Second's kid was James the Third, who said, "Hey, I'm king of Scotland," and he was in France. But people just laughed at him. People laughed like, at yeah, him. Right. Okay. 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 England realized, oh my God, the Jacobites and the Scottish clans and the Scottish Highlands 
they got problems. And we have to figure this out. This was in 1715. Okay, what do you mean by problems? Because I see it more as that they just have a lot of school spirit. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but to the English, this is a problem. Okay. Because they keep having these rebellions, and they're going to keep sending these guys over there to die. Well, you know what? These Stuarts are bloody right. They have the blood right. That's right. But they, their king, James II, abdicated. He gave way. Because his daughter came probably holding a sword. It's not their problem. I think it should be. It's that not their not problem. All right. So, and, and the fact is that Queen Anne, the last Stuart ruler, did not leave an heir. Did not. Yeah. So you go to the closest person who's a Stuart. Anyway. <laughs> so after the, after the first Jacobite rising, right? Remember how Frank said, oh, they took away their right to wear swords and all that other stuff? Yeah. That actually happened before the first, b- before Culloden. I feel like that was back in Braveheart. No, no, this was 1715. <laughs> oh. So that Are... actually happened before Culloden. Okay. It didn't happen because of Culloden. They had already placed this act called the Disarming Act in Scotland in 1716 because of the first rebellion. They didn't want any Scottish wearing any swords or whatever. They didn't, they didn't want it. So, in Scotland, they could not have in his or their custody, use or bear, broadsword or target, point, poignard, winger or dirk, side pistol, gun, or other warlike weapon. Oh my gosh, so all they had were like pitchforks. Correct. <laughs> kind of, yeah. So, essentially, their rights had already been taken away before the 45 Rebellion. Well, no wonder people were upset. I'm surprised more people weren't upset. All right, so getting back to the 45 Rebellion and the Heritable Jurisdictions Act, the ones that I talked about where the, where the people lost their right to have jurisdiction over their, over their people. Where they, where they took away the chieftain rights. All right, this was mainly a reinstatement of the earlier Disarming Act. But more hardcore. A little bit more hardcore. There were more severe punishments, which this time was original. Like, and, and this time it was more rigorous, rigorously enforced. It was more like, dude, we're not screwing around here. Like, you cannot wear a sword. If you do, that is the end of what we're of, of our relationship. We are not going to be cool with you. Okay, so this is what I don't understand history wise in this show. So, okay. like, Black Jack Randall sees, you know, Scottish people holding swords, like they have a sword on them. Yeah, well, re- remember, the rebellion hasn't happened yet. Yeah, but the and first it, one had. You said that correct. This, this disarming act already happened. Correct. So, but they're not really they're not really enforcing it. It's kind of like um, the texting law. You know, you're not. No one's really watching you, or the seatbelt law. No one's really watching you until you get caught. Okay. 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 So, but where where Frank is kind of right is that there was a new section put into this act called the Dress Act, which banned the wearing of any Highland dress. What? It also included, uh, to protect those involved, putting down rebellion from lawsuits, measures to prevent children from being educated in disaffected or religious rebellious principles. What does that even mean? I mean like, yeah, like they, they couldn't be taught like Scottish ways to be rebellious. <gasps> oh, my God. When you said Highland dress. And it even included a requirement for school prayers for the king and the royal Hanoverian family. Okay, so they don't get to have their cool outfits. I w- I hope they got to keep those gloves, yeah. those fingerless so gloves. So there were these, <laughs> yeah, or that that the infinity cowl. scarf. Yes. <laughs> so there were like really severe penalties. These people were put into like royal servitude, like indentured servants, kind of. If you were caught multiple times, and if you were caught once, you were minimum six months in incarceration and transportation to a penal colony for a second of offense, and these. And and that was like big time problems. God, England was not very nice. So that is the history of Culloden and the after effects of Culloden. So Frank was right, but he wasn't necessarily wrong. He wasn't necessarily right either. Oh my goodness! Okay, they're 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 taking creative and dramatic license, which they should. It's a TV show. They're supposed to. They're supposed to make you feel like it's Braveheart, like freedom and all that other crap. Okay, so I'm now very, 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 very mad at England. Well, you kind of should be because England at the time was not a, not a good place. And this was the time when they were trying to mess with the United States. Yes, that's right, as a matter of fact. We taught them a lesson. Damn straight. Okay, so recently there was a vote, the referendum vote in Scotland, where they had the choice to vote if they wanted to be Scotland all by themselves. Correct. So how does all this relate to the referendum? Well, like we talked about, the kingdoms of Scotland and England and Ireland 
decided to form their own country known as the United Kingdom in 1801. Okay, now, did they actually decide this, or were the English standing there with swords being like, high pitchwork people who don't wear kilts anymore? <laughs> You're going to nod your head yes. Yeah, that's kind of what happened. That's kind of what happened. But in 1922, Michael Collins and Eamon de Valera, all those guys in Ireland, they separated themselves with the Irish Republic in 1922, with, with, with the Irish Rebellion. You're getting really confusing, and I'm getting tired. Okay, sorry. Ultimately, what happens is this. You have England, Scotland, and the uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland as the United Kingdom. Yeah, because England basically bullied them, was like, you got to join us. And they were like, okay. So all these years later, in 1998, the Scotland Act established this new Scottish Parliament. And it was first elected on the 6th of May in 1999 with the power to legislate on unreserved matters within Scotland. Okay, so you can deal with your own matters. Yeah, you can do your own stuff. Cool. Okay. Eventually, the Scottish National Party gained momentum in Parliament. And in 2011, they gained finally a majority in the election for for the Parliament. And they said, we want to hold an independence referendum. So all these years have passed. All the tensions have kind of passed in Scotland and England. And they just said, look, we just kind of want to have our own country. So what happens? In 2012, the UK government decides, you know what? Okay. If you want to be in your own country, have fun with that. As long as it was fair, legal, and decisive. That's what that, that was the actual words that they, that they used. So what would happen? This was 2012. This This just happened. This is 2012. This This just happened two years ago. Okay. So I need you to fast forward because my attention span is waning. (laughs) It's true. It is totally true. Okay. So eventually they come to terms. They realize they're going to have this referendum. Okay. And uh, then they... Actually, the, the, what the, one of the funny thing is, the vote w- would take place on the 700th anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn, the one that Robert the Bruce won way back when, when the Stuart family line cool. was created. Oh, okay. Mel Gibson. That's right. So, you know, who would be entitled to vote? Uh, British citizens who are resident in Scotland, uh, you know, Scottish people, uh, anybody else that were... any. Like anybody else that was in Scotland had the right to vote okay. for Scottish independence. Okay. So the Scottish people voted. And it was like this unbelievable turning out of people. All of these people everywhere showed up. Okay. So what did they vote? They voted no. They didn't want independence. Why? You see, now that's the thing that is going on right now. N- because I'm like mad at England still, and I'm not even Scottish. <laughs> You're not even Scottish. Well, I kind of am, but not really. Okay, my family. Well, you gotta, you got to consider the terms. Why would people not want to vote for Scottish independence? Because they have problems getting their own money. They have problems getting their own armies, their own economy upstarted. What happens when the, the British pound, right? That's what they use right now. They don't, they don't use, they don't use uh, the euro. They use the pound. The pound is the most valuable currency in the world, to my knowledge. It's even more valuable than the United States dollar. Which is not worth a lot. Well, right now it's not necessarily. But what I'm saying is once you go from the pound to something else, your own little uh, currency, think of all the inflation. Think of all the problems that's going to happen as a result of that. All the all of like the technical details, schooling and armies and colleges and oh my god, social security and all all these things, uh, that all has to be decided. Oh my god! So basically, it was like getting kicked out of your house when you're 17 years old or 18 years old from your parents, but you're not really ready. And they're like, "Here's Sorry. your choice." Yep. Um, yeah. If you want to, if you want to stay out without curfew or do all these things, fine. Go see what it's like to be an adult. Yep. And then they kick you out, and you're like. Oh my, oh my God. All I know how to make is ramen. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm ready for this yet. So that's what happened. And that, my friends, is the history of the Jacobites. And you also got a little bit of history of English history, the Tudors, the Stuarts, and the Hanoverians. When we're, okay, let's clarify one thing. Yes. We're watching right now. Yes. Which of the Stuart family is alive? And right where now, at this very moment. Very moment. We have James the Third that is alive, mm-hmm. and we have Bonnie Prince Charlie who is alive. Mamma mia! Mamma, mamma mia! 
<laughs> okay, my brain is blown. My attention span is finally ended. Yes, it has. Good job. Thank you so much. Good, good job. I hope I hope this podcast didn't suck, guys. I'm sorry if it did, but I really wanted to get some good historical grasp of what is actually happening in Outlander, and not just the kind of artistic license that they're taking, but really what actually happened. It it, it was true that yes, there were some Scottish people who wanted Bonnie Prince Charlie on the throne. They had every right to want him on the throne. He was their steward king. But the problem was not everybody really wanted him on there. Not everybody really cared about it because they were happy with the Hanoverians. They were happy with the ruler they already had because they were good people. And they showed up. Now, the guy who eventually ran the... the Are you about to go on a tangent? The, well, the guy who eventually ran the, revo- uh, the the armies against the Americans in the revolution, the American revolution, he was not. He was kind of crazy. But for the most part, the head of Aryans have been a good rulers. So nobody really gave the support to Scotland that the show is making you believe that it gave. No, some people did. Some Scottish did. Some did. But they're making it seem like it's like, oh my God, Scotland versus England, and we're going to go fight, and it's going to be great. <laughs> I don't take it that way. And that I didn't take happen. it as like, you know, they're picking up people here or there who are really passionate. Agree to disagree, my darling. Well, let's just close out the show and uh, get people on their way. I'm glad. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. And coming up next, what do we have, my darling? We have our interview with... Christian Mallet. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Christian Mallet was the guy, if you don't remember, he was the guy who was in charge of all of the plastic prosthetics, including all of Jamie's scars on his back and the, the blood that came out of it and all that stuff. He was the one who was in charge of it. And he was in charge of some other some other things too that we're gonna get into that in interview, but uh, yeah, Mary's pregnant. We just did a history <laughs> podcast. We're having Christian Mallet on. We're back in our new studio. We're back on the podcast verse. God, I'm so happy that we're, we're back, here. guys. We are back. <laughs> I can't wait. So. Honey, if people want to get in touch with us, how do they do that? You can find us on our website, outlandercast.com, and you can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Our user handle is outlandercast. And you can also reach us at the Outlandercast hotline at 503-454-6730 or at outlandercast at gmail.com. If you're super excited that you saw a new episode, come on up in your news feed. Let us know because we're excited to be back. I'm excited to be like a human again. <laughs> Me too, actually. Um, I know, right? Three months is a very long time. Good Lord. Also, don't forget to check out the Mary and Blake online store where you can find a bunch of cool t-shirts and everything Outlander cast related, including our famous Sassanok wasted shirts. And if you feel so inclined, there's also a little button, a little donate button on outlandercast.com where if you want to help keep the show going if it's 50 cents 25 cents a dollar or hey even 100 bucks why not you can donate it to outlandercast and help us keep the show going and most importantly if you find yourself at outlandercast.com and you're like hey you know i got a business and i want it to be heard on outlandercast and all these thousands of people can hear it you can sponsor us and uh, check out our sponsorship little tab there and it shows you all the ways you can sponsor us which include banners on our website or sponsoring a segment of the show or just sponsoring the whole podcast episode altogether. Whatever you feel like you need to do, we can do that for you, and it would be awesome. So make sure you check that out, guys. So, yeah, send us a message. Let us know that you're still alive and that you're still listening if you are back. And if you want to rate us, you want to rate us and review us, I can do that too. I'm I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll take it. I'll have fun with that. You know, give us a five star, give us a four star, and if this podcast really sucked, give us a one star. That's okay too. <laughs> look, look, I realize that history for some people is boring, but if you're really into Scotland, you're really into Outlander. Hopefully, this is uh, hopefully this this helped you out. And if Blake said anything incorrect, I don't think I did. Email. I did I, a lot of research. Oh for my this. god! But someone's gonna find something wrong. So if so, send <laughs> us an email and correct us. You can berate me all you like. I would. <laughs> I did get my degree in history. Yeah, but you know. You messed up already a couple times. You were saying like James the first or James the second. That's because you're talking to me and you're messing me all up. That's right. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. We cannot wait to talk to you again soon. I'm Mary. My name is Blake. And you've been listening to Outlander Cast. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>